wow, they made a movie where Judy Dench looks bad. They made Sir Ian McKellen <laughs> lap water from a bowl. <laughs> Gandalf the f- Gray is like lapping up some water with his tongue. Oh my God. Get the f- out of here. How did I get here from fighting off a Balrog? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, did I will say though that I did like the bit with Ian McKellen, just because, like, you can't not like Ian McKellen, but also, like, oh, I'm so embarrassed during this movie. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, well, and he looked like he was having a great time just being like, just I'm, like a, I'm a crazy cat. I, <laughs> I got two minutes of this movie. <laughs> Maybe they'll pick me. Yeah, like, a great Ian McKellen. That was, yeah. that was spot on. Spot on. Spot on. Spot on. Spot on. <laughs> and that is acting. Making stuff is hard, especially in the entertainment world, where big egos, bigger budgets, and just plain bad luck can make things go horribly wrong. And we're going behind the scenes of these disastrous, never-ending, and often dangerous productions to find out why it was a shit show. Hello, fellow Jellical Cats. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. Uh, this is It Was a Shit Show. My name is Ian, joined by Clint. Hello. And Ray. Hello. And with us is a very special guest. Uh, not only was she a member of Clint and I's improv troupe uh, back in the day, <laughs> yeah. um, she was also a co-host with Ray's previous podcast, yep. uh, Woman's Planning. Mm-hmm. Melissa, thanks for joining. Hey, thanks. Yay. I'm excited to be here. Not as excited as me. Oh, my God. I was, every time you canceled and rescheduled, because I'm going to make sure that this is on the recording, I was just like, it only damn happens. it. I'll, I'll, a dozen times. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, every time I was like, oh, I just want, I want to record with Melissa so bad. And then she canceled. Like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and then finally we're here on a Monday night, which is awkward. But <laughs> she's handcuffed being to me. Out in yeah, public yeah, on a Monday night is awkward. Yeah. 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 And we're naked. So, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Even more. <laughs> uh, so with our third anniversary passing, I figured today would be a good time to watch another cat heavy film like Roar. Oh. Uh, this is the made up reason I came up for watching Cats. Uh, <laughs> good grief. <laughs> but, the, but the reason we have Melissa with us today is because she works in the theater business. Can you give an idea of what you do? Yeah. um, I have worked directing, designing, um, choreographing, musicals, stage theater, off and on for the last 23 years, which is gross. I like like how you turned to Clint to like fill in the blank for you. And 23 (laughs) years. Stop me if I'm too old. It's happened. Yeah, anytime I see a play and I need to talk to somebody about it, it's always Melissa. I'm like, Melissa, I got to break down what they did in this stage production (laughs) with somebody. Yes, it was horrifying. You're right. (laughs) This was bad, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. Well, since we're talking about a film adaptation of a Broadway hit, and maybe not the last, and maybe we'll talk about actual plays in the future, I wanted the closest person I could get that was involved in the theater industry. So thank you. Please, it's the theater. 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 (laughs) So today, let's talk cats. Now, I have never seen Cats. Um, Can you tell me or explain to me what the plot of Cats is? (laughs) Oh, wow. Uh, what a way to throw me under the bus there. Yes. No, it's, uh, it's a classic. It's a big musical. Sure, I'm Andrew, with that. Andrew Lord Webber. Right. And it is, a, it's, uh, I guess it's about a, a cat. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Maybe how, more than one. How Maybe am I doing? How am I doing? Very okay. good. And it's one cat's journey towards what is essentially cat heaven. Okay. okay. And the idea is that we all, you know, we aspire to get towards cat heaven. There's this young cat and she gets sort of, you know, taken on this story about how to get to cat heaven or what you should do to get into cat heaven. How am I doing? Does anyone know what the story is? That is the best explanation of the plot of cats I've ever heard. I was going to say, when you, t- when you said our names at the head of the start of the podcast, I was like, Ian, the naming of hosts is a difficult thing. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, what's your real guy? What's, what's your real, real host, host name? It's our cat names. Sorry, <laughs> cat names. Those names, man. In that show. Ray, Ray, <sighs> Renny, Jenny Dots. That's me. <laughs> yeah, but that's <laughs> Jenny Dots. I'm just making up. Do some we bullshit. get? Do they ever tell you if there's a, like, okay, so it was Jenny. Jenny Any Dots. Jenny Any Dots, is her household name Jenny? No, I, they don't. I don't think they ever tell you like her person name. Okay. Because it doesn't matter. <laughs> Fucking nonsense. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's get started does, with that. How does a how does a cat like its steak? Oh no. Well, <laughs> <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> that, is my, that is my four year old's favorite joke. <laughs> she loves it. Okay, we're going back to 1981. Andrew Lloyd Webber debuted his latest Broadway musical, Cats, based on the poems of T.S. Eliot. Ugh. So this is, Jenny Ray was like, isn't this based on something really nonsensical? Because I, I looked it up one time because I was like, the fuck is this show about? And I was like, T.S. Eliot poems, like that's what it's based <laughs> on? It's like so obscure. It's so obscure. Yeah. And one of the first things that January was like, why? Why is this such a thing? And <laughs> after it was over, and and I'll say, maybe the biggest scam in all of history, because it is the fourth longest running Broadway show, grossing nearly four billion worldwide. Wow. I don't understand. <laughs> I yeah, don't, it was like I the just first explain, it. Melissa. Mega explain. musical. <laughs> Yes. It's like the blockbuster, right, of musicals. And it's because its production values was one of the first to be the biggest thing you've ever seen on stage. So the singing had the pop mu uh, music songs that were going to be popular. And it had the giant ballads that everybody was going to sing. Every artist was going to remake. And then the dancing was phenomenal and the sets were larger than life. So this was like the first one before your Les Mis and Phantom. It opened the door for all of those. In fact, um, it started as mega musical, but now it's like your pop opera, pop musicals, which is even where Hamilton, yeah. you know, opened the yeah. door for all of now those. Now it's like a punchline and a whole bunch of like other pop culture things. Right, right. <laughs> No, I mean, yeah. I mean, we could just get into that, but I literally the the song. Uh, Memory, I always thought it was memory. memories. Yeah, memories. La, 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 la. Like that. <laughs> I don't know why I know that. Same, same. <laughs> I yeah. sat, I sat there and I pulled up, I pulled up a list of like every time cats is mentioned in pop culture. Yeah, and I went through uh, four different episodes of The Simpsons, <laughs> but I was pulling up all these things, going like. It's got to be somewhere referenced in something that we watched as kids, like Animaniacs or something crazy, because I cannot, why do I know that? <laughs> from Cats, yeah. <laughs> now, why it was made from T.S. Eliot. Is T.S. Eliot American? I don't, I actually I don't know I think he's British. Because, yeah, it was yeah. created in the UK and opened there and then it came to US. Mm. But I always wondered. <laughs> that I don't know. T.S. Yeah. Eliot. Melissa, stop trying to excuse this bullshit <laughs> no. musical. I okay? have no excuses, but it did. The the one positive thing about it is that it opened this huge, like everything was bigger, right? Mm. And that's awesome because those are a lot of musicals I do like, but it's yeah, yeah, yeah. horrifying. Right. Okay. Horrifying. The, yeah. Are you a fan? No, I am I'm not a fan, but the song Memory will get me choked up anytime I hear it. Well, yeah, that's what same. I... So it's confusing. Yeah. I, I, don't, I have I don't mixed remember. feelings about it. I don't ever remember seeing this as a kid, but I think my mom had like a VHS copy of like the stage show. And I remember them all like just in their spandex with like the crazy yeah. makeup and stuff like that. Yeah. Which oddly enough works better than anything that we saw in the movie. Uh-huh. Yeah. 100%. We'll, 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 we'll talk at that. We'll, so we'll get thoughts. to there. We'll I get have there. so many thoughts. I have so many thoughts. We'll get there. But, uh, and a huge coming of age moment for all the girls that I knew that were watching Cats growing up because we were like, oh, Oh, hello. I like boy cats. Like, <laughs> like that, you know, between cat, the recording bulb. of cats and then newsies, we were mm, like, yeah. okay, we know. Thank you <laughs> for confirming that. But uh, T.S. Eliot was born in St. Louis, Missouri. What? Oh. Shut up. 
There you go. Well, yeah, damn, I was wrong. That's anymore. exactly. They were like, we're going to write a crazy ass musical mm-hmm. based on poems from some crazy ass American. <laughs> yeah. Americans. Yeah. And Cats. they were, and like, from what I remember, they were like, they were like fairy tale, like they were like silly poems he wrote his kids to just be like, yeah. cats are weird. I'm just going to like write a silly little poem for my kid to talk about like all the mysterious things that cats do. And their personalities and. Yeah. And so like, what? I was telling Ian, if this had been a musical for kids like if it had been very sort of like oh just funny and kind of poppy and like silly songs I would have been like yeah of course but then like there's this dramatic tone that happens (laughs) it's like this isn't serious people it's about fucking cats like everybody calm down (sighs) okay sorry we'll get into it tell me tell us the facts (laughs) all right so this weirdly popular play uh, has had an adaptation in the works for a while uh, starting in, guesses? 1982. <laughs> right the 80s the must have spurred this. <laughs> I mean, 1990. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. It makes when... me sad that any years were, like, <laughs> Considered. any time was spent working on this. Well, and guess who got the rights from Lloyd Webber? Bono. A crack addict on the street. <laughs> um... <laughs> Dame Judy Dench. <laughs> She's had it this whole time. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, listen, I can't sing for shit, but <laughs> I'm going to be in it. the first the one. Musical. Yeah, uh, she was. Yeah. Um, Steven Spielberg. Oh my God, I was going to say that. <laughs> wow. I don't know why. I just like, in my mind, I was like, Spielberg? So in ni- so he got the rights for whatever reason, <laughs> and nothing really came of it until 1994, where Amblimation was established by Spielberg. Um, after Who Framed Roger Rabbit. They produced only three films. So based on our 90s VHS upbringings uh, with the uh, Amblimations logo with their mascot, Fievel, can you guess those three films? An American Tale. Fievel, Fievel Goes, goes West. An American Tale, Fievel Goes West. And Rock and Beetle. All Dogs Go to Heaven. Cast Don't Dance. Ooh. Fievel Goes West, yes. Not an American Tale, though? No. Because that was way before. Oh, okay. That's oh. where they got the... <laughs> not, so not all dogs go to heaven. Nope. The Secret of Nim. <laughs> we're back. Oh, my God. A dinosaur oh, I, story. Oh, we're back. <laughs> Holy shit. I love that movie. <laughs> you guys. Great movie. <laughs> and a dog movie. Um, We're back. A dog story. <laughs> we're Balta. back again. Balto. Balto. Oh, Balto. Okay. 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 Uh, Cold, cold dog story. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so the idea was to mix scale models for the sets and use traditional animation for the characters, which is actually kind of like would be really kind of interesting. That would to be see, kind of fun. Which is also kind of what we saw. <laughs> is, it, is that what we saw? I don't even know what I saw. Yeah. I don't know. So they spent six months in pre-production, like sitting there designing all these sets and all these things. And you can look those up and you can see all these images of, of uh, their ideas for it. Cat town. Um, cat. Uh, before He's like, we should just move here. <laughs> it's <like> a new city. <laughs> yeah, they just built a city. <laughs> but everybody has to dress as a cat. That's the um, rule. I'm so, there. But everyone had to move over and help finish Balto. The project restarted with a whole new team and a screenplay by Tom Stoppard. Oh, yeah, the playwright. Mm-hmm. Another playwright yeah. who did Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, yeah. mm-hmm. which was one of his big ones. So so it's I think it's very interesting that it's like having one playwright adapt a different playwright. Okay. <laughs> like It's every playwright straight. Yes. <laughs> Here, yeah. take this and make do it better. Yeah. <laughs> uh, take this and make it not terrible. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> so the problem uh, since day one is how do you write a three act structure? When the musical has no narrative. Correct. And uh, you just pass out drugs to everyone <laughs> coming into the theater. Yeah, That is a brilliant idea. Full, full disclosure, I saw, I saw this movie once and I was completely tanked when I saw it. <laughs> so I wish I was. I, I remember some things. <laughs> <laughs> but was it a pleasant so you, memory or still a negative memory? Because I oh, guess that would be no. I I drank so much that I vomited, but I'm pretty sure it was from actually watching the movie. <laughs> yeah. Did you rewatch it? 
No. <laughs> oh, I no, was. I'm not going to subject myself. To someone that. didn't do their homework. I did do my homework just a long time ago while I was in Hebrew. A long time ago and wasted, which is the only way to watch this movie. No, I was. We were painfully, painfully sober. I think like we didn't speak for the first 20 minutes, and then Ian just turned to me and goes. <laughs> Should I turn on the subtitles? And I was like, please. <laughs> like, like five minutes For the in. love of God. I have no idea what's going on. Yeah. I thought you were going to say we didn't talk to each other for three days. For three days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We watched Why it and we, did, we, did, we didn't talk to each other for three days. No, it was uh, – we watched it at 2 p.m. yesterday. Yeah. And there was a very great moment during it where I fell asleep, fell asleep. and then Jay Ray had to wake me up and slapping. rewind it. I was slapping him on the face. And I was like, if I have to watch this bullshit, you have to watch this bullshit. Wake up. Psh, 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 psh. Face uh, up. So Lloyd Webber also was adamant that the film not lose one song. So after Balto bombs, uh, Amblimation... Surprisingly. <laughs> yeah. uh, Amblimation was closed in 97. The entire staff joined the newly created DreamWorks animation working on... Shrek. Sh- Shrek? What was before that? Oh, uh, uh, Spirited, the, the dog, the, no, There was fuck, the, a time before Shrek. No, shit, hold on, there's two other movies, Prince of Egypt, or the, the horse one, what the fuck is that the one? St- spirit Stallion of the Cimarron? Yeah, that fucking Ants. horse. Anyway. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Not even close. Not even close. Uh, the horse movie. <laughs> the animal that was big, though, for sure. It wasn't well, a can... small animal. If there's one thing I remember clearly, it was, it was an a animal. large animal. Well, Ian does this thing where he's like, he like, I get so nervous. He's like, doing pop quiz. Uh, like, oh, fuck. It's something we've talked about. What are we talking about? After three, after three years of doing the show and 40 plus episodes. I'm going to get whipped up in the podcast. I know. Jesus. We keep telling him I'm going to get replaced. It's because of he's... this shit. Right here. He's <laughs> constantly trying to prove himself. Yeah. Because <laughs> then afterwards, I could be like, did, did I do good to you? <laughs> <laughs> You'll never get my approval. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, if you do like me, just comment Clint in this episode. Uh, well, oh, there's yeah. anything that we learn. Uh, if there's anything cut. that we learn from cats, it's that James Corden could definitely replace uh, you. Oh. And he did. Uh, that cuts deep. You know? <laughs> I thought we were friends. I thought, You've known each other for years, Melissa. You're. Mm. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, all that amblimation thing is why the movie starts out with Spielberg's Amblin Entertainment is on the credits of the film. Oh, because he noticed. has had the rights and sold Correct. them the rights? Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> if you notice that. I did, and I was like, hmm. And then I just, like, forgot about it immediately. <laughs> it went mm-hmm. away. I mean, I missed it because I was already, like, three shots in. Yeah. <laughs> what is that, a bike? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that man's still in a baby? <laughs> <laughs> Crashing into the moon. <laughs> All right, let's focus. Watch out. <laughs> okay. Then in 1996, hot off their Oscar nomination for Toy Story, Joel Cohen and Alex Sokolow uh, signed on, asked to rework Stoppard's script. Because apparently his was not good enough. Uh, nothing comes so of... much that you can work with. He's like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know anymore. Does anyone else want to look at this? Maybe that's all it was. Is like, I give up. I, I give up. Something. <laughs> He's cats. like the naming of cats. I give up. I'm out. I'm out here. I'm out of here. This shit is bananas. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck is a rum tum tugger? <laughs> well, that's his name. It's a name. You should ask Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, who told you about that? <laughs> Did Melissa tell you about that? <laughs> was her move. I thought, move. I thought that was secret girl code. <laughs> Damn it. Um, okay, so nothing comes of this script, and at some point, Universal gains the rights. So fast forward all the way to 2013. Lloyd Webber says that Universal is suddenly interested in making the movie again, thanks to the enormous success of... Les Miserables. Yes. Mm. Which was under Universal. Mm -hmm. Directed by Tom Hooper, grossed $440 million, nominated for eight Academy Awards. So, like, they're like, oh, clearly there's something there. Let's do it again. (laughs) He can do musicals. This is like, Uh, but like. He can't cast musicals, but he can do that. Yeah. (laughs) The shows are, Melissa has an opinion about this that I want to hear later, but I was just going to say that those two musicals are fucking apples and like kumquats. Like, they are not (laughs) similar. Apple cum. Worms. And (laughs) like, not even fucking close. Like, an epic, beautiful story about the French Revolution and like some bullshit about cats. (laughs) <laughs> Not even close. So in May of 2016, so uh, three years later, 
Tom Hooper signs on to direct the film. So we got the same studio, same director. What could go wrong, right? Mm. Uh, when he signed on, he was already developing it for a few years because Universal wanted him to have a plan to figure out whether it should be live action, CGI, or they even considered really good puppets. He was like, yes, we'll, oh. all three. We'll just... <laughs> I'll put them all in. <laughs> sure. Now it's a Muppet movie. Just Damn, get, that would just, be so much better. It would have been get, so much better. We'll just get real cats. <laughs> It works for, yeah. it works for that, that movie about the dog and the cat. They're Cats trying, versus dogs? No, they're trying to find the home. Homecoming. Homeward, Homeward Bound. Bound. Homeward yeah. Bound. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> the end of that. Make your cry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he had to have a plan to make this work before it was greenlit. Clint, you're going to be our Tom Hooper. I thought maybe it's never been made because no one can figure out what the cat should look like. And maybe some visual effects technology might have opened up a portal to reexamining how you might do that. And so began a seven-year journey to figure out what the answer was. Real quick. What do you mean to figure out what cats should look like? It's like the one animal everyone knows Everybody what knows. looks like. like. Well, a cat on a human. A cat, yeah. <laughs> or whether or not. We've been doing it for a hundred years on stage, but now let's figure out <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's like what it should look like. There's like three. There's three options. There's fully animated. There's people in costumes, and then there's this bullshit that they did. <laughs> this wasn't an option. And this, this was, well, this like, was it was an option, but it was, like, the bad choice. Because fully animated and people in costumes would have been better. Mm-hmm. Like, hands down. Well, so they spent a year working on makeup tests, just seeing if they, mm-hmm. they could pull it off. This is Tom Hooper. The difficulty was you ended up with a full-faced prosthetic where you lost so much emotion. And you also still got static cat ears on the head. It's crazy not to move the ears, so all the paths seem to lead me back to the visual effects. As if people who've been watching the musical for decades have been like, the, the ears, ears aren't moving. <laughs> Damn it, the ears aren't moving. There's the not memory. The... What memory? The memory of the cat, <laughs> the cat ears not moving. <laughs> like there's no emotion cares. in the in their face without the ears moving. <laughs> I this 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 act, this quote actually really pisses me off because this this seems like when you look at the final film, it's essentially. The human face with whiskers on it. Mm-hmm. They didn't add like puffy cheeks when they usually do like uh, like a person becomes a cat yeah. or whatever where they, they, they add like extensions to their lips and mm-hmm. cheeks and stuff like that. It's just their faces with whiskers on it. Well, that would and, have been like the mustache Superman situation where like they yeah. were moving and the images yeah. had just been fizz- fuzzy. But why not do everything? So if that was what the look was going to be end up looking like anyway, why not do... All of that in makeup and make the ears visual effects. Yeah. yeah. Oh, smart. I don't know. I don't know how that never came up. Get Hollywood on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> because, Ian, you should have made of, this movie. Um, the, the, I was thinking of uh, where the wild things are. The movie. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Where like those are full suits, and then they just animated the face. And so, like, it was a perfect melding of the two. Yeah. yeah. And so it's like, why not just do that with the the ears and the tail? Mm-hmm. I don't, it just drives me crazy that they apparently spent seven years journey to figure out what we ended up with. Again, and it was so popular on Broadway where people could see the full emotion of what was happening on yeah. stage. And all of a sudden they were like, we don't, we don't know. We don't know what they're <laughs> yeah. feeling. We've never... Yeah, it's Never almost like they've gone the so far away from it that they forgot where they started, started. Where, what the yeah. start was. Although it I will like I will say that doing like acting for a stage performance is very different from acting for like film because it's more quiet and more that. like personal. So like when you're on Broadway, you can be like big and loud and huge, and like when you're on film, you can't be that way or like it, you'll look insane. Well, and that's the problem with this show turning it into a TV film, is yeah. that the whole part of it is spectacle. Large spectacle, not close up on yeah. a cat's face. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. This is like Ian's problem with turning musical Broadway musicals into movies. It's fucking weird when someone is singing at you in a close up. <laughs> when Judy Tench just turned to the screen at the end of that movie and just started singing to the camera, I was like, what is happening now? Yeah. <laughs> and then he like thought unsettling. the musical was over after Every Her first line. Phrase yeah. That she's saying. You're like, yes. should we get, is it, okay, you're still singing? No. Oh, one done more yet? line? Okay. Oh my God. I and was, now yeah. should I leave? You're still singing. Yeah. Cool. That's exactly what I <laughs> what was like. Happening? I was like, won't this end? Please just end <laughs> she's, now. She's still going. Um, I think she's just improving extra lines to the end of this musical now. <laughs> uh, what, what you said about casting, uh, the terrible casting of Les Mis, 
Both Russell Hugh Jackman Hill. and Anne Hathaway were asked to star in both. Were I thought busy. you were going to say asked to stop. <laughs> Just Please stop, stop. The filming. Just kidding. They were great. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, what's his name shows up. So I, I know you're saying like Russell Crowe is really terrible in Les Mis. But uh, who was the random guy that uh, Ray Weinstone who shows up as like the the cat on the on the barge. <laughs> oh, yeah. And yeah, he was yeah, really yeah, terrible yeah. singing. And it was like, growl, why is growl tiger? Yeah. And he has like three lines. Yeah. And it was like, yeah. why him? Yeah. yeah. I mean, why this whole movie? Okay, but continue. Okay. Uh, <laughs> For a second, Taylor... I was getting that mixed up with Late Miz, and I was like, I don't remember the cat on the bar. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 uh, you don't remember that Late Miz? To me where that, that came from. Is that cat the one that stole the bread? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> or the silverware. Was that damn cat. <laughs> he went to jail for that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Taylor Swift, uh, when she joined, she helped Andrew Lloyd Webber with the new song, Beautiful Ghosts. Which is what I was saying. It's like there's mm. actually a story to that because I actually think that is the one song I did like in the movie. It's so good. Yeah. That, and well, that and because t- memory. Well, it's T-Swift, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, okay. So right, this is Swift, crazy to me. Swift, any other Swifties in here? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's okay. <laughs> I don't know what everything means, but I'm a fan. <laughs> She's fine. Um, <laughs> Weber says he regretted not ever giving Victoria a song in the play, mm-hmm. which seems insane to me to be like this is the main character <laughs> and I never gave she's her a song she's just the storyteller though like that's all she's just that's the end she's, she's, she's the, the person audience. exposition is yeah. thrown at yes exactly <laughs> exactly yeah, yeah. I a mean, stand that's, in that's for true. the she's audience she's definitely listener. not a character no, completely cardboard yeah but one of the ones that was actually a dancer hired to play in this mm-hmm. which yeah. the whole thing is built for yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> seems seems like for every I'm supposed step to be the... on here to talk about all the good things about musicals, <laughs> not the musicals. <laughs> this is not the one. <laughs> uh, okay, so the actors and dancers had to attend cat school to be more cat like. No. The minute uh, I saw that on my schedule, I'd be like calling my agent uh, to quit the show. <laughs> Hi. I know this was called Cats, but I'm not going to cat school. You want to go to cat school with uh, Edris Elba? <laughs> Change my mind. <laughs> Change my mind. Yeah, I, I'm, in. Yeah. I'm in. Scratch that. that yeah, but like... then, but then, like, you have to, like, then you kind of might lose respect for Idris Elba because you're, like, watching him, like... <laughs> or gain it, right? Because, like, oh, I guess to have the... Know. just. Yeah, Why the fuck act not? like a cat. But like, corner. I don't know if I would want Idris Elba watching me try to act like a cat. I would just be like, look, I'm already clumsy and uncoordinated and like as no landing is. on the feet over here. Well, yeah. yeah, but okay, but there's there's a difference between going to like dancing where you're doing choreography. Mm-hmm. You're <laughs> there's another thing where the this cat schools where they literally were they had to like crawl around on the ground and like meow at each other and like rub against oh, each guys, other. Oh. Like this is being an actor is me awkward. Into like theater school where we would do mirror exercises <laughs> yes. oh, yeah. for an hour. <laughs> We pay. I paid for this in college, <laughs> in upper education. All right. So, however, uh, Hooper would go back and forth on their performances uh, when he when they were actually on set. This is Taylor Swift. Jenny Rain will be our Taylor Swift. Okay. She Don't says. Don't make all the. What are they called? Swifties. Swifties. <laughs> Swifties. Don't make them all angry. Come after you. The Swiftie I, army. Uh, oh God! I, I don't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Swifters. <laughs> Swifters. Um, okay. Also you clean up the, real well. It's called a squad. <laughs> Squad, oh, squad. Sure. oh shit, I don't even know. <laughs> we were going to be hybrids in both our appearance and our behavior and movement, which was so funny because you'd walk on set one day and they'd be like, oh, we have to redo the choreography. It's a little too human today. We need to make it more cat today. Or they'd be like, it's a little too cat and not enough dance. So we need to dial back the cat and make it more dance. So she says that kind of like, <laughs> how funny is that? She says that kind of like funny, but it's like, no, that sounds like no somebody That's does conf- not... Con- like confusing. Yeah, someone is not like has a nice solid idea of what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> also, the choreographers, if I'm not mistaken, were from the original musical. Or choreography reboot. was by Andy Blanken Bueller, who yeah. did Hamilton yeah. and In the Heights. So they were from oh, Broadway. Broadway. They knew what they were doing. And yeah. was this guy coming in being like, less cat, more human, or <laughs> more human, less cat. And they're looking at each other like, this is a this the movie. Is a, yeah, this motherfucker. This is a, okay. You, all right. You do it. Well, it would just be like the same thing that we, we talked about um, for Food Fight with Ryan, who were like, what would you do if like, you know, an Anna, you know, the director came to you and said, oh, I need this to be better. He's like, I'll just show him, I'll just wait three hours, show him the same thing and yeah. it'll be fine. And so be like, that's what they should have done. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, we just did the same dance and just showed the same thing. Oh, yeah. yeah, it was perfect. 
Perfect. Oh, great, 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 great toning down of the cat. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's better. It's way better. So what did you change? No. Nothing. Nothing. Oh, we're going to get into Tom Hooper. Okay. <laughs> uh, filming started in December of 2018 and went till April of 2019. So long shoot. Uh, the release date was December 20th, 2019. Not a lot of time for VFX. No. <laughs> <laughs> the press really jumped on Hooper's term of digital fur technology. <laughs> So what is that? Is that like jiggle physics? <laughs> it is. It's yeah. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's that's me working out jiggle physics. <laughs> jiggle <laughs> physics. So this is a video of what you can kind of see for the VFX. The actors wore, let's say, mild motion capture suits. Uh, nothing on the level of uh, Avatar or Food Fight. So give you an idea. So the best way to describe the tech that they're using is kind of like phone filters, how people have those phone filters now that... Um, that turn you into a cat? <laughs> yeah. So when you have the phone filters that make people's faces look weird or... Like uh, on Snapchat and all that. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Um, think of it that way, where it was supposed to just look at a person and then just put all the, the fur on them and uh, make them look like a cat. That's... Just the layman's version of that. Um, obviously, it's way more complicated. For all you kids out there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you Snapchat. Um, this is where... <laughs> Who's listening to the podcast. <laughs> yeah, right. This is where the real shit show begins. So, Tom Hooper was woefully ignorant on how visual effects are made mm. in general. Mm-hmm. He didn't seem to understand the rendering process. So, rendering means after you've block something out, you press render, and it does all the hair, it does all the lighting, does all the reflections, and it takes hours to do that. They, they usually only do it for final things. So you have to figure out what it is, what it looks like before. So um, think Food Fight. Like Food Fight is what you would see a pre-render be like. Okay, the general idea is there. I like the shots. I like where this thing is looking. Now push the render where all the real, the, the really fancy shit happens. Yeah, the texturing, the lighting, the ca- the compositing, the camera, the like Everything. all the yeah. things that makes it look good. And so for every one second of film, that can take hours. So that's why they have a render farm. That's why they have render farms. Hooper didn't seem to understand that, <laughs> mm. um, and so he would watch these rough cuts and get furious, saying things like, "What is this garbage?" And I don't understand, where's the fur? Because he didn't, they're like, okay, here's the rough draft of what the the cats are going to look like. Mm -hmm. And so you just need to make sure that it's in a good place before we do the final work on it. So he began demanding that they they give him fully rendered shots before he would give notes. That's nice. Yeah. Whoa. So so he they would render out a whole scene, mm-hmm. would take weeks to render, yeah. and then he'd be like, I don't like that, I don't like that, I don't like that. And then it would start that whole process over, over again, again. Right? Yeah. So more cat like. <laughs> yeah. More so yeah. too much cat. Uh, <laughs> more human. Get, Wait, less human. We will get to that. Um okay. VFX work was halfway done when they discovered Oh, they left the lens cap on. Oh, shit. <laughs> they all looked like dogs. <laughs> what was the most infamous thing about this movie? Oh, the buttholes. The buttholes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> they were like, oh, those buttholes are unsettling. <laughs> so <laughs> nobody... <laughs> so the fabled butthole cut of cats kind of exists. Uh, it didn't really get that far. Um, someone programmed the digital fur technology to include an anus. So (laughs) when it's looking at the body, it goes, okay, this is where the fur goes here. This is where it goes here. Here's where it looks like they got scratched, whatever. This is where the tail goes. And then they're like, and cats have butts. And a butthole. Put put a butthole on it, right? Cats are famous for having (laughs) buttholes. Yes, they are. Famously. (laughs) They're always showing them to you. They want (laughs) you to know they have a butthole, like more than anything. So this was not originally discussed in Anyway, wow. Um, but after this was pointed out, someone was just like, "Whoa, what? Did I just was that, the, sta- just... Was that in the stage show? Do you see buttholes in the stage show? <laughs> <laughs> Any they stage, stage all the stage all the They just leave. They just leave a little bit of like the le- they just cut a little bit out of the leotard. <laughs> That's where the mic pack like, is. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> little balloon uh, back there. Yep. <laughs> so after this was pointed out, some poor fool uh, at the VFX company had to go back through all the completed portions of the film and take out those chocolate starfishes. 
<laughs> but did they have an official discussion at the beginning of that all the cats were neutered? <laughs> because none of yeah. that was in there. Oh, yeah. They were all stray cats. Yeah. <laughs> so they, way to go wherever mm. this was set. They, I was going to say, I'm it's like, they have a really good, yeah, like catch and release neuter program in wherever the hell Maybe they were. Maybe that's what she was. London. <laughs> Victoria, like that's how they all end up there. Oh. They just get neutered and they get thrown into that right, alley. Back, yeah, yeah. It's the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so as things progressed, Hooper becomes even more and more of a maniac. Uh, he demands to see videos of real cats performing the exact same motions. Okay, I have shut to leave. up. <laughs> That's First of all, you can't make a cat do shit. Has and what do cats can't cat? do? They can't dance. dance. Cats don't dance. Cats don't cats dance. Cats don't follow instructions. No. <laughs> no. If look you ask you, a cat to do anything, that cat will be look at you and be like, fuck you, and yeah. then do the exact opposite. He just spent hours watching like TikToks of people throwing yeah. cucumbers into a room full of cats. <laughs> <laughs> just like freaking the fuck out. It's great. I mean, if, you want, um, if you want a movie about a cat pushing a glass off of a table, I mean, you can get that footage <laughs> anywhere. Uh, yeah. Rebel Wilson did that, I think, halfway through the oh, movie. Oh, did she? I don't know. I was drunk. Yeah. <laughs> so not only does he not know how VFX work, he doesn't know how cats work. Apparently not. <laughs> okay. Well, the first, Great. like, two minutes of the movie, I just remember being like, what? What is that? <laughs> Even before they showed the cat, just all the shadows of the cats, I was like... What is that? Like <laughs> over and over again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's something about the like the human form of like the knee going the other other direction yeah, that yeah. just makes you immediately go, "What the fuck porn am I watching yeah, right now?" Yeah. <laughs> this is an alien movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Hooper refused to speak to anyone unless they were supervisors, and one by one, those supervisors would quit or refuse to work with him <laughs> because he was. Insane. A, a dick. <laughs> I'm uh, not coming out of my room until you make that cat dance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've seen cats do pirouettes, I'm pretty sure. The supervisors were like, we're dog people, bro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're out of here. <laughs> Sorry. So according to anonymous sources, Hooper was horrible, disrespectful, demeaning, and condescending. So like a cat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when you would go into a conference room, you're not allowed to speak, and he talks to you like you're garbage. Damn. Mm. Then he starts to send individual crew members emails insulting their work. Whoa. So he's just like, you, craft services person. The carrots were stale. Well, well no, More uh, kibble, you for, fool. for the VFX, the VFX team. Okay, okay. He would he would just go like, "What the fuck is this? Yeah. Like, why'd you do that? This is what supervisors are for." Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I, uh, craft services one would be so funny. It's like, "Where's the goddamn meow mix?" Meow 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 meow. He's like, and everybody, there's the kitty litter, and that's where you go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> that's where the rumors got. That's the that's how from. method the set was. Now, excuse me while I give myself a bath. <laughs> He's licking everybody. Uh, everybody. Get in line. Everybody has to do it that <laughs> way. Do not go home and take a shower. You shower here <laughs> with your hands. You lick your hand and rub your face. <laughs> okay, trailer hits July of 2019. Cue the internet exploding. I honestly feel like I remember the moment that that came out and being like, no, and just turning it off. <laughs> Absolutely not. Yeah, I had a similar experience, but I off. thought to myself, as soon as I saw that trailer, it was like, the world's coming to an end. Yeah. And then 2020. Oh, 2020. Yeah. Yeah, it's all oh. cat's fault. <laughs> cats. Uh, this is Hooper on the trailer. I think the trailer reaction was interesting because it reminded me of what my original intention was, which was to not have the visual effects get in the way and protect the human face in the design. Good job, I guess. <laughs> He's like, oh, yeah, you know, what I meant was I wanted to see more of the human face in it. I know my email yesterday said a lot of <laughs> other things, but uh, just like refer if you could to the first one I sent. Yeah, there's a chain <laughs> of emails. Just you know, look at the back. That's so stupid because he spent weeks having him render shit. Yeah, and then to go back, like you, you had you had so much focus on everything that was done, and had your your fingers over everything, and you was just fine. Pause. And then the trailer comes out. Yeah, it's pause. It's pause. Yeah. And then you come, then the trailer comes out, and you're like, oh yeah, I guess that was that was my bad. Like, 
like, yeah, it, he was so tunnel vision and nobody was sitting there going, uh, like Universal going, okay, um, no. This looks like <laughs> shit. <laughs> Are you a supervisor? I'm not talking to you. So with the feedback from the internet, he decides he's going to adjust some of the characters for the final film. Mm. Uh, that would includes like making um, James Corden look a little bit more comedic. Like they give him, he gives him bigger whiskers, that kind of stuff. Mm. Uh, Bring back but the holes. <laughs> all the shit that they've already done, right? Mm -hmm. So it took six months to finalize the VFX for the trailer. And it was perfect and everyone loved everyone, it. Yeah. And we're all Leaving only four it. months to complete the movie. Wow. Jesus Christ. So. <laughs> Even he was upset. Yeah. Like he, he was just <laughs> like, no. I'm not touching that. <laughs> He's like, listen, I made humans and cats two distinct things for a reason. <laughs> uh, the VFX studios were putting upward to 90 hour work weeks. Uh, this is the anonymous source um, that spoke to the Daily Beast. It was pure, almost slavery for us. How much work we put into it with no time and everything was difficult. We were so rushed on the project that we'd have no time for anything. So when people say, oh, the effects were not good or the animation's not good or anything, that's not our fault. We have no time. Six months to do a two minute trailer and four months to do a film of an hour and a half. My math is pretty good. You could figure that doesn't make any sense. So he so like after he was so upset about the reaction to the trailer that he just put all the effort into just making the trailer like making the appearance of the film look better than the actual film. I I don't know. That's crazy. I don't know. That's bonkers. Um also yeah. why would you not just delay the movie like if it looks like hot garbage? Right. Like right? just delay it. Like no one's just no one's like going, "Where is Cats?" Where like no one's like demanding. <laughs> and also, cats. everybody that watches the trailer isn't like, "Yes, perfect." The rest <laughs> of the movie better be <laughs> just as just like as that. This. Yeah. yeah. Did this yeah. come out around the same time as Sonic? It had to have, right? Getting ahead of me. Oh my god. Oh, oh, no. oh we're okay. so good at this podcast. Clint, Clint, Clint. <laughs> you redeemed yourself. Clint, we're going to get to it. We're going to oh, get to it. Gonna Take go. a shot. <laughs> okay, so this is we're going to watch just a little bit of the trailers. Um the first trailer compared to what the movie actually looked like. Oh boy, and you okay. You can okay. see that you'll be like, "Oh yeah, the trailer looked better." What it looks like is happening there is they were like more human and the more human is bad. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, I'm wondering if that was a, a thing of like, we don't have time to do it the other way. Like we mm -hmm. have to have the more human version to get this because done. we can't. Well, one of the yeah, maybe most glaring things about them as cats is the fact that they they look like they have itty bitty heads yeah. on this cat body. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like the cat, the body, fine, whatever. Like they needed to make the head's bigger and when they made it more human like they got rid of all that extra fuzz like fur and, and fur fluff and yeah and it just made their heads look even smaller <laughs> yep they should have kept the buttholes <laughs> <laughs> also um, I imagine uh, after they go through like, and do it all in the 90 hour weeks um, all of the editors were recognizing that they kept human hands and that Hopper didn't realize <laughs> that he hadn't changed them to paws yet and just kept them there. Yeah, because this, this this other shot here is a perfect example of what you're saying, Melissa. They got rid of the fur on like the cheeks and stuff. And yeah. So, yeah, she just makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> Slash turned on. Yeah, well, maybe. So I... I know that there's kind of a lighting and a color grading situation happening here, too. But, like, Rebel Wilson's face right there looks like a human face and not like it's white fur. So, in theory, if they didn't change the look, they could have finished it like that. Right. Because it was, like I said, it's just a filter right. that's going mm -hmm. over them. In theory, they could have just kept going with that. But since yeah. they changed it all, then they're back to square one. Mm. Um, so, uh, after hearing... Um, so much backlash to the CGI. Hooper still defends it. Tom Hooper? I think I found the language that I wanted, and so that extent of the journey reached its conclusion. It's very entertaining and escapist and quite anarchic and bonkers and fun, as well as moving and funny. So I hope people will see the movie. <laughs> you guys, this is fun. 
<laughs> okay, so go see this movie I made. It's it's so super fun. fun. Everybody <laughs> come. I mean, there's probably those. Well, there's probably those outliers out there. I was like, well, I thought it was fine, right? But I, there's probably people out there who came out of the movie just like hating themselves. <laughs> <laughs> you mean like people who watched it or people who were involved with it? Both. <laughs> <laughs> well, so my my background for this movie, watching this movie, is we Lisa and I were on vacation. You were hammered. We, yes. were, we were on vacation with some friends and like, I got a great idea. Let's watch Cats and let's get drunk and do it. I'm like, all right, okay, that sounds like fun. Because my friend was like, well, I saw it sober and I thought maybe it would be more fun if I drank. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. And I thought the same thing. Yep. <laughs> so we, we, so she, I asked her, I was like, so what, how did they compare? She's like, that oh, was still bad. <laughs> 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 it was still bad. I just didn't mind as much the second time. Yeah. So, moving picture company Vancouver. Sound familiar? Who handled most of the VFX of this movie and Sonic. 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 <laughs> shut down. Back around. Shut down one week before Cat's release and two weeks before Christmas. 800 people lost their job. No. They're like, we so they stop worked on trailers. this and Sonic? <laughs> yes. These poor fools had to deal with had this to twice. bust their Jesus. ass to like redo effects. <sighs> <laughs> uh, VFX was completed 48 hours before the premiere. Jesus Whoa. Christ. Mm. Finished yeah, you is can, a loose word. I know, I was going <laughs> to say. I mean, you can kind of, you can kind of tell because like that last shot, there's just, you were, you pointed it out of like Judy Dench sitting on the statue. There, it's just like a hand. Like there's not yeah. even any. It's just like an old lady hand on a cat body. <laughs> She's got her wedding ring on it. Yeah, yeah. and everything. Yeah. So uh, there's, there's this phrase that I use like when I'm just like in my my own like work life when I'm working on a project, and it's I always say to myself, Jellicle oh, cats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like pouncing around on his keyboard. <laughs> Jellicles can and Jellicles do. <laughs> Ian pokes his head up from the cubicle and across the door. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Clint's like. <laughs> and then I get a little. <laughs> Spray bottle. Yeah. Get a spray bottle. <laughs> get off the counter. <laughs> no, it's it's perfect as the enemy of done. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> if I'm yeah. working on a project, there's, it's not going to be perfect, but it can be done, right? Yeah. But I think with this, it's just like you guys still could have just yeah worked a little bit more. It doesn't need Something. to be. It doesn't need to be perfect. Well, but like but... this isn't even done though. I don't yeah. know what this is. <laughs> I get what you're saying, but yeah. it sort of doesn't apply because they did neither. It was neither perfect nor was <laughs> it done. Was done yeah. <laughs> they just had that. We found this meme on the internet. Some guy yep. on a keyboard <laughs> hissing. <laughs> I mean, really, like it's kind of like Food Fight where they were just kind of forced to finish it. Yeah. Like, and you can clearly, like the cockroach scene, Ugh. like it just seems like they just rushed through that as fast as they could. The mice were terrible. Oh, oh <laughs> for creepy. Yeah. <laughs> And the whole thing was creepy. The whole, well, they have different people coming in every day saying, no, more, that looks co- cockroach. That looks like an ant back yeah. and forth. <laughs> more cockroach. More, no, more, more human. human. What would a cockroach do? Get me yeah. a video. <laughs> Get me a video of a cockroach dancing in a can-can line. I need to see what that would look yeah. like. And Pop one in your mouth. mouth. Let's see how this goes. Yeah. <laughs> do you think they'll ever try and do it again? Yeah. Absolutely. Cats. 25 years. So. 100%. Okay. So oh, yeah. Cats released December 20th. 2019. Day one in theaters, people are instantly noticing some glaring errors in the visual effects from characters floating in midair to the digital fur technology not even being applied and you say, to like the background people. You say people as if it was like an expert watching the movie, but it was 100% like a random kid that yeah. was like, Mom, what? why is that cat floating? <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, we missed one. Yeah, 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 right? <laughs> Uh, were, were, leading, there, were there hairless cats and characters in the show? Uh, thank God, so. no. Um, those Egyptian this ones. Led, yeah, because those aren't jellical cats. <laughs> those, oh. Yeah. <laughs> they're unholy. The <laughs> they're unholy spawns of Satan. <laughs> what the fuck is a jellical cat? <laughs> it's the type of cat that gets chosen to possibly move on to the okay. list we'll, of we'll, second We'll life. jump into the, the cult. We'll jump okay. into the cult when I'm we like, go I to the end. I need to talk about end. it. Okay. okay, so this led to the infamous photo of Judy Dench with the human hand. Yes. yes. So this this went around on Twitter like crazy. Um, and it, she just has that human hand. Okay. Here's the thing about this. So this was the joke that was going around. But most of their hands weren't very... There's not a lot of digital on there. No, no. And no. she's also wearing a coat. So there is a question of whether or not that's actually what her hand is supposed to look like or not. 
But the version we watched yesterday still had it that way. Yeah, yeah, they only changed it on some streaming services, it sounds like. But I don't even know if that was true. It's just something I read. So by Monday of the release of Cats, Universal had sent revised versions of the film to theaters. Wow. Jesus. So day one Jesus. DLC. Yeah. It's a day one, <laughs> day one, it's patch, a day one, day one patch. patch. Uh, <laughs> Good Lord. So opening, Which is not a thing in movies. <laughs> uh, no, it is not. <laughs> <It's> not. <laughs> opening weekend, uh, it was it was meant to be counter-programming to Star Wars Rise of Skywalker. Which totally obliterated Which cats. Which one should we go to? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, finished fourth for the weekend, un- even under Frozen 2's fifth weekend. Uh, People are like, ah, let's just go see Frozen 2 again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that sounds fun. Yeah, that was properly rendered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Rotten Tomato critics, 19%. That's generous. <laughs> yeah. I agree. That's pretty generous. And guesses on the audience score. Seven. I think I'm willing to bet a lot of people ironically like rated this up. So I I'm gonna say it's like high. Fight. Yeah. Memories. Like the people are yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna say that like it probably has like way too high, maybe like forty seven. Fifty three percent. But I went through a bunch of those reviews and they are not ironic. Oh my god. They're actually people who it's really grandmas. Liked it. It's people's grandmas. I guess. Oh, people's like, grandmas. I was looking for like, the people like, who were being tongue in cheek. into cats. <laughs> Can you? <laughs> the Susan, world we just, live in. I Susan just loved that cats. cats. <laughs> they were like, no, I'm a cat. I Did still you? don't know what a genital cat that, is. That Taylor, that Taylor Swift was just delightful in the cats. <laughs> Edgar Selma got me sweating. Yeah. <laughs> Why was he the most boring looking cat oh when my... he when he lost his costume? It was no, like it's so stupid. He was the most generic one. Uh, that James Corden's charming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we agree. That's why I we, um... see. I see him on the Tonight's Night Show. Tonight's <laughs> Night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, budget of ninety five million. Oh boy. Grossed twenty seven million in the United States, oh, which boy. seems again generous, yeah. and seventy five million worldwide. Wow. Lastly, in March of two thousand twenty, James Corden and Rebel Wilson presented the Oscar for Best sure Visual did. Effects. No. Oh, yeah. Okay. As cast members of the motion picture Cats, nobody more than us understands the importance of good good visual visual effects. effects. So Maya Rudolph's face is kind of accurate to what we're about to talk to. So there's a screen cap of this, these two, Uh and Jenny Ray, this is Yves McRae who was a visual effects artist on the film. He's responding to a clip of that shows these two. Right, right, right. Hey guys, I haven't watched all of the Oscars, but I assume these two were really classy and thanked me for working 80-hour weeks right up until I was laid off and the studio closed, right? Ooh. Ooh, yeah. yeah. That's in pretty bad taste. Like, right? I, like I get, I get that they're just like, oh, we're just trying to be funny and like it's a joke. Don't worry about it, but yeah, it's like, but, well, but how it, do you make fun of everything you've just did yeah. and the critics without, yeah. And But but it's that category, and it's like, this is the fault. The movie is the fault of the visual effects, yeah. and it they oh, are just doing their fucking jobs. jobs. Right. Yeah. That movie went wrong well before exactly. any visual effects work happened. That movie went wrong in the conception of the original musical. That's where that movie went wrong. Yeah. End of podcast. So, uh, <laughs> so lastly, I just want to point out that like one one thing that uh, came up a lot that I saw was I again have not seen Cats, but that the film lacked that tongue in cheek kind of eighties ridiculousness right. of the play. Yeah. Like that it was big and broad and crazy and weird. Yeah. And, the whole and this thing... movie was very played straight. Yeah. Right. It felt the like whole... it felt like they were taking themselves too seriously for yes. this movie and it, right. it worked against them. Yeah. The whole yes. idea of cats is to like let the audience have fun and be silly and be bigger than everything and this didn't trust the audience to have a good time yeah. they just treated us like idiots like if you don't you know do it perfectly yeah and you didn't 
and it ruined everything. I felt like this movie was an email from Tom Hooper per- to me personally, <laughs> where he was just like, hey, um, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> My movie is great. And it's like, no, bro. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He directed the King's Speech. I know. January, January looks him up and goes... Oh, oh he he's, makes good movies. He makes yeah. good, he's made good movies. I was like shocked. <laughs> well, but when but he apparently did. Apparently he's a son of a bitch. When he did Les Mis, the whole thing was, um, you know, this is brand new. We're doing a musical live. We're, we're, we're singing live, live into the microphones. <laughs> Nobody's ever done this before. And all the musical theater people on set are like, yeah, every night. And guess what? We don't get a. We don't get a call cut when we mess up. Yep. What are you doing? Just <laughs> record it into a studio and do this. Don't do this live. Don't make them have, you know, four microphones padded into these cat outfits. <laughs> just just so you can say, like, we we did nothing. We did this brand new. We recorded it live to, for an audience. Yeah. You're like, mm-hmm. no, just leave that to Broadway. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do it in a recording studio. CG this correctly. Yeah. I mean, was it worth it? <laughs> I don't, I mean, you don't even have not to. Not for the hangover I no. had the next morning. <laughs> not well, for Clint's hangover and not for my life. Here's what was worth it about the musical. The new song that T-Swift wrote mm-hmm. with Weber, right? Mm. That was beautiful. And it added a new, like, aspect to the storyline of Cats that brought Victoria in that gave some, like, cool closure. Um, and Jennifer Hudson did that song better than anyone who's ever done it before. So that, between the new song, which was fantastic, and Jennifer Hudson's performance, that was great. But yeah. Wolf. Yeah, I, I will add one other thing. You mean meow. in the uh, meow, meow. the the production design on it was actually really kind of fantastic. I thought it it looked really cool. Like the visual effects are obviously undone. <laughs> like just they're kind of crappy, but there was a lot of um th- there was a lot of images that were actually kind of pretty cool. Like yeah. if if it, it all came together, yeah. like it would have like you could screenshot of those as like artwork. It did like look, it looked yeah. really it cool. It looked very painterly. Yes. yes. Outside of that, um, I have no compliments. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I agree with you about Jennifer Hudson. Like, her performance was she, – she was great. Like, she yeah. was heartbreaking. And I was just like, I'm so sad for her that she has to play this dumbass cat character and yeah. sing this, like, amazing song with her good at a voice. Concert. But also a character that was like, we're yeah. just constantly just being <laughs> – She's the cat that went to other places. So she's a whore oh, cat? Yeah, what? she is a whore cat. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So that that's what I, I was like. I was just like, but like, what What are they? Because the songs were so confusing and the lyrics were so like coded and like weird <laughs> yeah. language that I'm like, but what's even happening? Like, why is she an outcast? Because she's like, is, are they saying she's a prostitute? But also like, how does that, like, why does that apply to cats? They're animals. Like, who gives a shit? Yeah. <laughs> We're, like shaming cats yeah. for living their lives. You know what? Stop, <laughs> stop sex and butthole shaming cats <laughs> is what I'm here to say. Listen, when there are cats outside my window, they're like fighting or some shit, like keep me up at night. I or will, sexing. Yeah. I will 100% judge them and be like, you motherfuckers. Yeah. I will shame them. Well, that's because like two cats. Whatever. You go out there, you get drug and watch them. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh, is, that, is that what you actually watched? Is that watched? what happened when I, you I thought you saw cats? I yeah. <laughs> I, was just, I was just wandering around He's the like, streets. That's why you didn't notice this. I was this. like, oh, this cats movie's great. <laughs> He's like, wait a minute. The one I watched had buttholes. <laughs> 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 a lot of A lot of buttholes. Um, no, this movie was not worth it. No. I just, I like, eat, I feel so bad for those those VFX artists and like those people who worked their asses off and got laid off and yeah. they, yeah, that just sucks. It was just for as if them. they were like, oh, Broadway made so much money off of this musical that's been running forever. We could easily make tons of money off of this. And then they put it on screen. And they're like, wait, why, why is broad? Why are people seeing this? What's <laughs> we did, yeah. We don't understand the stage. Yeah. No. It, it, well, yeah. Right. Like, it, well, it's like what you said about like, they got so far away from the original beginning that it, it was so misguided throughout that I legitimately was like, I, I don't like this movie throughout the entire thing. I don't care about anything that's no, going yeah. on. I don't like any of these people. It was, you I mean felt cats. more, <laughs> I felt more, more embarrassed by the more people that kept showing up. Yeah. That it was just like, like Judy Dench. Wow. They made a movie 
where Judy Dench looks bad. Ooh. Like she can't sing and she she just looks like just crazy. And it was like, wow, you made Judy Dench look bad. Like that is They made Sir Ian McKellen <laughs> lap water from a bowl. <laughs> Gandalf the fucking gray is like lapping up some water with his tongue. Oh my god. Get the fuck out of here. How did I get here from fighting off a Balrog (laughs) to now lapping up water? I mean, I, I, I will say though that despite like every single fucking song in this movie being ab. Except for memory and the ghosts one being yeah. absolutely terrible and unmemorable Forgettable, yeah. and unsingable too. I did like the bit with Ian McKellen just because like you can't not like Ian McKellen, but also like you can't. You're also just like, oh, I'm so embarrassed during this movie. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. Well, and he looked like he was having a great time just being like, just I'm, like a, I'm a crazy cat. I, <laughs> I got two minutes of this movie. <laughs> Maybe they'll pick me. Yeah. Like, but, I but a great still. Ian McKellen. That was, yeah. that was spot on. Spot on. Spot on. <laughs> the okay, so you were saying that like the the main actress that they cast is Victoria. They uh, specifically cast because she is a ballerina. She's a professional ballerina, yeah. and like the dancing in this was amazing. But I was also like again mad because I'm just like I can't even enjoy this dancing because they look so fucking stupid as right. cats. Yeah, like, and, and, but, and also they're like <gasps> the, the, the VFX where their heads are like not. They're really like not quite and, there. It's like yeah. their faces are kind of floating, and it's yeah. like oh my god. Well, and but, all of them are supposed to be phenomenal dancers. So then you're stocking it with all of these, you know, famous people that yeah. you're then coming to see who can't dance as yeah. well as these professional right. ballerinas. And the whole point of the stage musical is seeing a giant production yeah. full of amazing dancers. Well, and then on the flip side, the that actress, they added a song for her character, which was not normally in the play. And yeah. she couldn't sing she very sing. well. Yeah. I was just like... Like it was fine, but like then you compare it's her not, to not good. The, like like Jennifer Hudson sings her fucking face off, mm-hmm. and then like this girl comes in, and it's like beautiful ghost. I'm like, oh no, yeah. why would they do that to you? <laughs> and she's singing Ooh. it directly next to Ooh, Eastwood, yeah. who was like, ah, ah, ah. yeah. So like, can we put my version in the credits? Let me. Mm-hmm. And it's different than it's different than you know like Judy Dench or Ian McKellen who are doing more character singing. We're right. like. It's fine. They don't have to be that good at singing. Like, whatever. That's a character song. Yeah. Um, anyway, so it's just like, it just hit, hits. I mean, not hit, not even hits. It just misses. It's all misses. But they're just like, okay, we got a dancer, but she kind of can't sing. Okay, we got some singers, but they kind of can't dance. Um, this is a big, crazy mm, play, mm, but mm, we're going to do it completely so, straight and so totally serious. serious. <sighs> and then oh, the, the jokes in it. Were just no. like there were parts where it was just like I think they were just shooting Rebel Wilson <laughs> off off camera standing and then on she the was side. just making these random jokes that they just tried to throw in there yeah and then like all like the physical humor was just like none of this works this is just it, it, I I mean it to me it was borderline unwatchable it yeah. was just like I I don't care don't care yep yeah. Like, <laughs> like I said, we like didn't speak to each other for like. <laughs> and normally, if we're, we normally, just cried. We cried for like fifteen minutes. You went to bed angry. Just yeah. Like, oh, normally, if we're watching like a bad, like a a bad movie, but it's like fun bad. Like we're like laughing and like talking through it, and like he and I were just. Like, no, please no. Like, just, what, what am I watching uh, right now? Like yes. I tried to get my so. kids to watch it with me and they're like, uh, can we put Mario back in? I was like, yes, yes, yes we right, can. All right. Oh, speaking of movies that did cat humans better, Super Mario Brothers movie. Mario in a cat suit, better than this movie. <laughs> another conversation, another day. <sighs> we'll get to it. We'll get, we'll to, get it. to it. Um, oh, did you bring something for the closet? I yes. did. I brought my original playbill from another Andrew Lloyd Webber musical. Oh. <laughs> oh. From 2009. Oh. My phantom playbill. <laughs> Look Here at in you. Utah? Look at, no, this is No, a that's York. Broadway, my friend. Oh, my that is a Broadway together. playbill. <laughs> so, Ian, Ian doesn't go to the theater. The He's theater. never seen a Broadway playbill. We got the fucking <laughs> worst seats for this show. Like, we were all the way at the very top 
shoved all the way to the very like left corner mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. like but it was still a really good show i bet it was better than this movie <laughs> yeah it absolutely was <laughs> you're like i also was drunk <laughs> yeah, right <laughs> oh man i wish that would have been such a fun sh- trip i was yeah. gonna, i was Especially gonna s- sitting in the balcony back there where you know, the seats are like don't move you will fall yeah, out i of will the fall seat. and everyone will i will kill people as i roll down the, roll down the aisles yeah yeah yeah, what what we did not tell everybody uh, earlier is that Clint is wearing a full body cat suit right now. Yeah, Clint's <laughs> closet. <laughs> he would push his tail out not, of the way yeah. numerous times. <laughs> not, kept whipping better people. than your tail. <laughs> but it's simultaneously a cat suit, like uh, it looks like a cat, but it's also one of those like eighties rock star cat suits. Oh, it's like <laughs> very like, skin tight, very skin tight cat <laughs> yep. suit. All you, right. all, you all were troopers not acting as uncomfortable as I know you all are in this cat. Well, I'm in this cat suit. <laughs> little, I mean, I've had a ha- happy this eyes. whole time. <laughs> I've been very uncomfortable. Uh, I didn't I know speak did. to Clint for the first 20 minutes of this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> and I know it didn't help when I was just licking my hand and rubbing my yeah. face. I know, it, I know it didn't help. We've been all shouting. slurping cat- noises. That's Clint giving him a <laughs> meow. Bow. We've been all shouting, less cat, more human this whole time. <laughs> this is my only the, outfit. You don't want me to take it off. That five minutes that you just went to town on your butthole was <laughs> yes. not fun. Nope. It especially was awkward and I looked straight you, you straight in the eyes. While like, you did it. Like, he like did that thing that cast where he stretched, fully stretched his leg out. It was like, how do you like this? Huh? Huh? <laughs> Ew. All right. We got some we got some follow up from shitheads. So the there was just a big one that I got just recently from Soul Says to Mabel pointed me to a blog post by Ken Levine, who was a writer on MASH, Simpsons, Frasier, and Cheers. So in this blog post, he talks about his work on Jewel of the Nile. Uh, Romancing the Stone screenwriter Diane Thomas was busy writing for Spielberg, so Mark Rosenthal and Lawrence Connor wrote the script for Jewel of the Nile. This is the one that Kathleen Turner like truly hated. Mm-hmm. And in our episode, I mentioned that Michael Douglas talked to Thomas about some ideas and hired an unknown script doctor. Well, this was Daniel Isaacs and Ken Levine. They did the rewrite. So they get the second and third act in a good place, but are struggling with the first. So they call up Diane Thomas to help them um, because she came up with these characters, like why she should have some input. Yeah, she knows. And and so she's like, oh, yeah, absolutely. But she only can do it on weekends. They get some ideas from her. They finish, have to get the script translated into French so the Moroccan government can approve it. Mm. So there's a lot of like leeway time that's happening while uh, production is just about to start. At this point, Douglas asked them to join them on set, but they had started a project with Mary Tyler Moore. So they were busy. So much of the surprise of those writers, Douglas then rehired Rosenthal and Connor instead. So the guys that wrote the original script that oh, the Turner, Turner hated. hated. So they start to reinstate their original version back into the script, which is what Turner was reading on the plane when she was like bitching about it. Oh. Remember, she was like on the plane going, what is this bullshit? Yeah. And they yeah. were like two rows back. <laughs> yeah. And they like yeah. put their newspapers yeah. up. And, then, <laughs> and this was the combination of those scripts. Remember the grab bag yeah, script yeah, yeah. about how they were like they, th- they we were joking that they just threw up all the pages. We're like, let's do this one. <laughs> Those money grab tanks. Yeah, that money, you're in. money grab, yeah. script grab. Um, as Levine says, I defy anyone to explain the plot of Jewel of the Nile. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I tried. So the the and he goes into a little sad territory in there. But the infamous thing about Diane Thomas's story was that she was like she was this screenwriter that just suddenly came out of nowhere to do Romancing the Stone and was working with Spielberg on two different projects and she died in a car accident remember mm-hmm. and this was in the Porsche that Michael Douglas bought her now according to the sources that that were everywhere I read said that that was a gift to her for the success of Romancing the Stone but Levine said Douglas gifted it to her for helping on Jewel of the Nile Mm. So Levine feels some incredible amounts of guilt for pulling her into that movie. Oh, mm. oh, oh, it's not your fault, Levine. Yeah. Oh, man. So what's the, okay, so what's the blog, though? So you said that that's, this was that from... Was, that's, that's Ken Levine's blog post. He explains all of that. No, I know, but like, what's the name of his blog? 
Oh, it's just KenLevine.com. Levine the life? Living the life? (laughs) Levine La Vida Loca? (laughs) Come on, Ken Levine. Get creative with your titles. You're a writer. I believe in you. All right. If you want us to read your review um, on this podcast, then leave us a review. Go to Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen and leave us a review or a comment. And if you want to hear extended versions of this podcast, you can join Patreon where we cut out a lot of us just fucking just around. Just fucking around. <laughs> a lot of weird, weird conversations that happen that we're like, eh, maybe that director's cut. <laughs> yeah. So if you want the director's cut, check us out on Patreon.com slash It Was A Shit Show. 